A good morning, everyone. I think we're going to have a lot of fun this morning. Good morning, Walt, Andy. Good morning. <coughs> Good morning, Mr. Keith. Bill, yes, let the fun begin. Good morning, me amigos. Well, for those watching in Europe, uh, good afternoon, or that would be a guten tag in Germany. And for those in Australia or New Zealand, uh, good tomorrow afternoon. I've never learned to speak Australian or New Zealand, but uh, I can do a little bit of German, a little bit of Spanish, just enough to get myself in trouble. Beautiful, beautiful morning. Summertime in Arizona. Miss Victoria, how are you? Hey, Miss Victoria, my wife enjoyed your brownies very much, and uh, the fruit smoothie was absolutely delicious. As soon as I saw that, I knew I had another I had to make another trip out there. Uh, Victoria owns uh, Victoria Sugar Shack on Northern Avenue here in uh, Kingman, Arizona. It is the go-to place for good pies and pastries. And, and uh, if you're a Route 66 traveler, you know, after you've driven a couple couple thousand miles, what's uh, another couple mile detour off Route 66? It's well worth the visit, trust me. Hey, we have a few minutes here to show time, and let me finish setting up for this morning's program. So you grab your cup of coffee and pull up a chair. And... Good, Andy. I'm glad to hear that. Miss Victoria, I'd still want to come out and do a program uh, one morning again out there, and show off the, some of the things that you've got. <clears throat> well, here in my corner of the world. It has been, uh, well, we've been doing a summer of, of pretty pretty record heat. And, uh, well, now I don't know what to do. We've had a break from weeks of record-setting heat. And uh, the temperatures have plummeted to 97, 98 degrees. I'm afraid if this keeps up, I may have to dust off the long johns and look for a sweater. Uh, well, anyway, you know me. Generally, I look for my long johns anytime the temperature drops below 80 anyway. 
I have a fun little program for you this morning uh, that includes discussing good food and road trips. Two of my favorite things, good food and road trips. We're going to be talking about some of my favorite little places like a, a little wild hair cafe in Elkhart, Illinois. Uh, the common theme to questions asked often centers on recommendations for great places to eat on Route 66. Well, as you can imagine, I uh, have more than a few recommendations. That's one reason I wrote the little pocket book, 100 Things to Do on Route 66 Before You Die. A lot of that's centered on food. Great places to eat on Route 66. Well, um, I can't promise that all these places are open right now, as we seem to be addressing the pandemic like a one-legged blind man playing darts. Everything is subject to change at a moment's notice. Anyway, <clears throat> I thought it might be fun to kick out a bit of uh, automotive trivia this morning. That seems popular. Um, the 5 Minutes with Jim podcast and weekly column for written uh, for motoring NZ has really, uh, I'm, I'm surprised by the questions and things I get. So I, I just know that people are really interested in uh, the uh, automotive trivia. So we're going to try to do a little bit of that for you this morning. Here's just a little bit of teaser. Did you know that the brothers who uh, manufactured the most famous steam car in the world we're also the fellows behind the founding of Kodak. How about that? And uh, I have a few surprises, plus a couple of uh, Jim Hinckley's America updates. Of course, before we saddle up for this morning's adventure, I want to give a shout-out to, to Joe and Woody and Don and the boys of the road crew for our great theme song. You know, if you need a uh, road trip-inspiring tune... I just can't say enough about the boys of the road crew. Their music is uh, a great road trip inspiration or a soundtrack for your adventure. And you can find out more at uh, roadcrew66.com. It's, uh, it's just great toe-tapping little tunes there. Okay, let's kick this off with some automotive trivia and an opportunity to fill our head with a bit of useless knowledge, as my pa always said. And uh, let's see what we got for you here. The Stanley Brothers. They enjoyed practical jokes that centered on the fact that they were identical twins. And... Um, They were also um, started out as uh, teachers at uh, a schooling uh, situation. And um, they were also very talented musicians. And um, they actually had a company producing violins at one time. But they had a dry photographic uh, plate process really changed the, the uh, whole thing about photography. And when they started getting involved with automobiles, they sold their patents for that process to a fellow named George Eastman. And uh, he started a little company selling photographic equipment, cameras and such, that he named Kodak. And now you know the story behind Eastman. And of course, the uh, brothers began producing a legendary steam car. I should note that it was Stas Stanley Automobile at uh, Daytona Beach in 1906, set a new land speed record of 149.6 miles per hour. I think those boys must have had ice water in their veins. Okay, I got another one for you. This is going to surprise you. And uh, got a little something here for you. Let me pull this up real quick. Uh, David Buick. Uh, the name might sound a little familiar to you. 
He had a company originally that manufactured plumbing supplies. The cornerstone for that business was his patent for fixing porcelain to cast iron. So the next time you decide to enjoy a bubble bath, thank David Buick. He's the man behind the cast iron bathtub. See, my Paul always said, better to fill your head with useless knowledge than no knowledge at all. Yes, sir, E-Bob, that's what we do here. Ah, let's do one more of the automotive trivia category. How many people are familiar with Horace and John Dodge? The fellows behind the Dodge automobile. They were a couple of characters, to say the very least, but they were hard-working folks, and from what I understand, hard-drinking folks. Well, did you know that these brothers were the cornerstone for a dozen automobile companies? They produced differentials and transmissions originally through their, their shops. Uh, for companies, uh, they, were, they, they supplied uh, the cornerstone, if you will. The Oldsmobile's reputation, initial reputation for durability, that was built on products like transmissions and differentials built by the Dodge brothers. Henry Ford, William Durant, the fellow who eventually launched General Motors, uh, they uh, initially used uh, Dodge transmissions and differentials in their automobiles. And um, here's another one for you. Did you know that John Dodge was once the vice president of Ford Motor Company? Now, if you use any of this trivia and you win a grand prize on a game show, like, uh, oh, I don't know, Jeopardy, please don't forget me. <laughs> hey, next up, let's talk about some of my favorite subjects. Food and food on road trips. My first up is a little discovery that I made very close to home recently. This is downtown Kingman on Beale Street, just off Route 66. Uh, Rickety Cricket Brewing Company. They are offering, on Wednesdays, a uh, $10 burger and beer special and uh, trust me it was delicious uh, I would recommend the uh, bearded bagpipe and uh, the burger with prickly pear barbecue sauce I was quite impressed okay um, I don't think that the uh, recent restaurant closures in California has hurt Valenzuela's very much. I discovered Valenzuela's in Needles, California all, uh, about a, uh, two years ago when I was down there on business. Uh, the food is a hair above average and it's, it's not on a main street, it's kind of on a side street down there, you gotta kind of look for it. Um, they, the restaurant closes every summer from June until September because it, uh, it, it, it gets a bit warm along the Colorado River, and these folks are running with, with evaporative coolers. And uh, to clarify, I'm not saying that needles is hell in the summer, but if I, I bet if you squint real hard, you can see it from there. Anyway, this little gem is really something. The food is a hair above average. Uh, it's decent. No, nothing extraordinary, but it's, it's good food, and the prices were very fair. But what really impressed me the most about Valenzuela's, family owned, and that it opened in 1952. The interior is an absolute time capsule. Even the kitchen has the original stove, surgically clean, and the cook is often the elderly daughter of the founder. The waiter is her son. Get a chance. Check out Valenzuela's Needles, California. Okay, let's. Uh, the next one I have for you is in Gallup, New Mexico. Uh, the El Rancho was opened by the brother of D.W. Griffith, the movie movie producer, and it was uh, billed as the world's largest ranch house. And uh, they filmed a lot of movies in the area of Gallup in the 40s and 50s, and this become a haven. 
apparently it also became a getaway for celebrities wanting to escape Hollywood. John Wayne kept a suite downstairs by the bar on permanent retainer. Um, the venerable old uh, uh, El Rancho hotel lobby, man, it is a sight to behold. Now, I've yet to have a bad meal at the hotel restaurant, and the setting is really a step back to the 1950s, and when this was a haven for the rich and the famous. But for me, what really sets this place apart from every other restaurant on the road is breakfast. Yeah, you can uh, order huevos rancheros and basic fare such as omelets with a New Mexico touch, namely green and red chili sauce. Or you can even get uh, basics, biscuits and gravy and normal foods, if you will. Okay, but, uh, but here's something special. This is the only place that I know of off the Navajo or Hopi reservations where you can order a tole. It's a delicious blue corn meal cereal served hot with brown sugar and milk. My, I usually round this off with a uh, side of bacon and uh, El Rancho potatoes fried up with green and red chilies. It's kind of a great way to start the day, isn't it? For me, anyhow. Well, keep the questions coming. I'm going to answer directly, as quickly as possible, or on our Coffee with Jim program every Sunday. So send those questions along. After all, telling people where to go, that's kind of what I do. Okay, in case you missed it, uh, I'm continuing to build the library of, ex of exclusive content on the Patreon-based crowdfunding site. Uh, most recently... I started a new series on um, how to use uh, how to build a social media presence, a website presence, and how to uh, not be intimidated by technologies and put it to work for you a little bit. And so uh, this last Saturday, yesterday, I started with. Uh, I, uh, I had did a tutorial on using Canva to create professional attention-grabbing Facebook headers. Um, I also wrote the first of a two-part series about a cross-country adventure in an air-cooled Franklin that was published originally in the year 1906. Uh, I will be uh, publishing part two of that uh, tomorrow on our Patreon-based crowdfunding site. Uh, last week, I talked a bit about the innovative Route 66 navigation app. Well, you know what? If you want to, uh, if you have another, I, I got an added incentive for you to take that for a, a spin. And that is, I have, my services have been retained to write the uh, POI, point of interest file for that app. So, uh, here's another way to enhance your trip using Route 66 navigation. I'm not sure how long this will take, uh, probably one to two weeks. And you should have a great Jim Hinckley point of interest file on Route 66 navigation. I'm really honored and pleased to be a part of this project, uh, not just because they, uh, they've retained my services, but uh, I just really believe in this product, and I believe in the people behind it. Okay, uh, barring another shutdown or another 2020 surprise, such as a meteor strike, volcanic eruption, uh, on the sat afternoon of Saturday the 15th of August, the long-anticipated Chillin' on Beale beach party will be taking place. And uh, this is always, always a great and fun event. And I, I know folks can be a little worried, and I don't blame them about this COVID thing, but this is a simple deal. It's all outdoors with music. Uh, folks simply cruising, parking their cars along Beale Street, just one block off Andy Devine Avenue, uh, which is Route 66. Uh, for the second year in a row, I am honored 
by an opportunity to select a recipient for the Jim Hinckley Award. Chillin' on Beale is held on the third Saturday of each month, April through October, except in apocalyptic years like 2020. And uh, I was going to be handing this event, this trophy out back in May, and as you can see, that's been delayed, so that should be a lot of fun. Let's see, I have some other things to share with you today. And uh, let's see what I've got here. Oh, um, a few weeks ago I noted the collapse of tourism had mandated cl uh, closures as a result of the pandemic had brought the uh, California Route 66 Museum uh, to the brink of permanent closure. Well, I am quite glad to report that they... Uh, Uh, had a, uh, a car show uh, outside. Uh, I'm just happier than fleas on a puppy to announce this. They've re received, earned a reprieve. They had a car show benefit, and people from all over turned out in, to help, and they raised more than $16,000. So God bless. That is some really, really good news from Route 66 right there. We, we are all, I think we can all agree we need a bit of good news once in a while because it's just not it's just not a good year guys okay next up this one comes to you from Tulsa the owner of the Buck Adams uh, Cosmic Curio Shop on Route 66 in Tulsa they have opened an Airbnb in a century old house directly behind the property. It's called Box Cosmic Crash Pad on Route 66. Uh, it's in a 1917 three-bedroom house. It goes for $137 a night. Okay, this one's a little bit sad, a little bit somber, but we've got to report this one too. The wonderful, wonderful Palms Grill Cafe, Atlanta, Illinois, Billy Connolly stopped there during his Route 66 adventure to try out the pie. Uh, I, I always stop there for pie and coffee. A uh, recent announcement has uh, the cafe is permanently closed until a new lease can be found. The announcement noted that result of the pandemic and the dramatic decline of Route 66 tourism, they had no choice but to shut down. Well... You know, indications are that Route 66 tourism is going to remain stagnant or even decline further, at least through the summer of 2021. My concern is growing that more businesses will be closing. Folks, now more than ever, we need to be building cooperative partnerships. There's no end to things we can disagree on and argue about. And if we allow it, we will be played against each other. After all, it is an election year. But if Route 66 is to survive in the centennial and beyond, we'd best find ways to work together. Okay, next up, this week's coffee cup sponsor. And we'll talk more about my coffee cup program, promotional, my way of trying to help out uh, businesses a tad bit. But this week's sponsor is Lucille's Roadhouse in... Uh, Oklahoma, Weatherford, Oklahoma, and this is a great little spot. My dearest friend and I, when we were rolling through Oklahoma on Old Route 66, we always, always try to stop at Louise, um, Lucille's. If thing, this place makes me happier than a yearling with a bucket of oats. It's a near-perfect blending of classic Route 66 and modern diner. I've eaten breakfast, lunch, and dinner here. I've never had a bad meal, and I try and I keep trying to sample everything on the menu, but they, they, they dress that up once in a while. Uh, I sure hope they're doing well during these trying times. Okay. Next up, would you like your museum... Uh, business or your community featured on Coffee with Jim. Here's how this works. All you got to do is send us a coffee cu cup 
and we'll do the rest. We'll get a little plug up on our Sunday morning program and uh, give a shout out. Let folks know you're there. Pretty simple. But don't forget, uh, my dearest friend and I are just eating on a regular basis. So if the budget allows, add some cash or, or a check. And if you'd like a more expansive promotion through our multifaceted travel network, we have advertising sponsor opportunities starting at $6.25 per week. As a hint of how big a bang you will get for your advertising dollar, aside from the Facebook page, we also have the website, jimhinkleysamerica.com, uh, the weekly 5 Minutes with Jim podcast, YouTube channel, and a variety of live stream programs that seem to attract a fair audience. Uh, telling people where to go, that's been my specialty since 1990. And with that said, I want to thank you to, uh, to supporters of our crowdfunding initiative. They help make this program and the free weekly travel planning newsletter possible. I'd also like to give a shout out to some of our advertising sponsors, such as the one and only Wagon Wheel Motel in Cuba, Missouri, and the Roadrunner Lodge in Tucumcari, New Mexico. And speaking of the Roadrunner Lodge in Tucumcari, New Mexico, uh, they have been the recipient of a real major award that needs to be noted. Uh, this is in uh, Tucumcari. And as with the Wagon Wheel Motel, the Roadrunner Lodge is a magical place where the past and present blend seamlessly. They... Uh, Recently received an award from TripAdvisor, and uh, I'm really, really proud of David Brenner on this. I'll pull this up for you real quick. Take a look at what they got. The Lodge is a 2020 Traveler's Choice Award from TripAdvisor. Congratulations, David Brenner, for all the hard work, for the hospitality, and for taking care of folks on Route 66. Well, my friends, it's almost, I don't know how it happens. Oh, uh, Miss Victoria, she says they have a big surprise edition coming in September, hopefully by September 25th, which is National Bakery Day. Definitely have piqued my interest. I hope it has to do with pies. Folks, we've been, uh, been beating my gums here for almost a half hour, and I sure don't want to wear out my welcome, so I'd better wrap this up, I suppose. Uh, a reminder, our audio podcast for, with uh, 5 Minutes with Jim is published on the Jim Hinckley's America Facebook page every Sunday morning. And you can find all 89 plus episodes <coughs> excuse me, on the podcast page at jimhinckleysamerica.com. Uh, I want to say something else about the podcast. My uh, audio engineer will be going away for a little bit. So there will not be a new episode next week. But the week after, we'll be back to our regular schedule. Uh, okay. Before I bid adios, let's see what questions we've got here. We mentioned Lulu joined us. Well, God bless. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Good to see you. Andy, we're hoping that you'll answer this question. Andy has a little trivia for us. Where and when was the first automobile sold in the USA? Andy's going to have to share that information with us. Michelle, good morning. Jim, uh, let's see, I hope you're doing well in Iowa, as I recall. Let's see, Bill, I've said good morning. And Keith and Andy, God bless. And Walter, well, the amigos, you know, thank you for joining us this morning. I... Uh, I really enjoy our visits, and it gives me a it gives me a sense of normalcy that I've come to appreciate. And I hope you'll join us again next Sunday morning for another episode of Coffee with Jim. Invite your friends. Let's make it a coffee party. Until then, my friends, vaya con Dios. Adios. <laughs>